Let us now go to etiology and Chinese medicine. The topic is five endogenous pathogenic evils. In CM, the six climatic pathogenic factors, wind, cold, heat, dampness, dryness, and fire are external disease causing agents. Clinically, there are some conditions that have similar features to those caused by these exogenous agents but are caused by endogenous factors arising out of imbalance of yin-yang or qi blood, disturbance of the body fluids, or dysfunction of the zhangfu organs. To distinguish these factors from the climatic pathogenic evils, CM terms the endogenous wind, endogenous cold, endogenous dampness, endogenous dryness, and endogenous fire. Endogenous wind the guide to clinical practice states endogenous wind is the abnormal movement of the body's yang qi. It is a condition of liver yang being overactive and moving upward adversely. Hence, it is also known as internally steering liver wind. It arises when yang is exuberant or when deficient yin is unable to restrain yang. The main symptoms are sudden shakes, dizziness or vertigo, spasms or tremors or convulsion. There are four main types of endogenous wind. One is liver yang transforming into wind. This occurs when the passions or overexertion injure liver and kidney yin, so that yang rises without restraint and the water element fails to nourish the wood element. Clinically, illnesses of endogenous wind manifest muscular twitching and cramping, numbness, tremor of the limbs, unsteady gait, vertigo, deviation of the mouth and eyes, or hemiplegia. In severe cases, there may be sudden loss of consciousness, collapse, or coma. Next is extreme heat generating wind. Strong exogenous heat damages yin fluids and nutritive blood. This causes the liver meridian to lose their nourishment and moisture and disrupts the mobility of the joints and muscles. The damaged yin permits liver yang to rise without restraint and transform into wind. Clinically, there are two groups of symptoms. Those due to wind are convulsion, spasm, nasal flaring, and rolling up of the eyes. Those due to heat disturbing the mind are high fever, delirium, and coma. Next is yin deficiency stirring wind. Yin fluids may be damaged rapidly by blazing heat or imperceptibly over a long period. In either case, the yin fluids become depleted, even exhausted, and can no longer nourish the sinews or meridians. In such conditions, wind can also arise. Again, there are two groups of symptoms. Those due to wind or twitching of the tendons and muscles and tremors of the hands and feet. Those due to yin deficiency are rampant fever, hotness in the five centers, emaciation, night sweats, a tender and red tongue with a thin coating, and a thread-like rapid but forceless pulse. Next is blood deficiency generating wind. This condition occurs mostly in situations of inadequate blood formation, heavy loss of blood or chronic illnesses wearing out nutritive blood. In any case, liver blood becomes insufficient and fails to nourish the sinews. Clinically, there are symptoms of wind such as numbness of the limbs or trunk, twitching of the muscles or spasms in severe cases. There are symptoms of blood deficiency such as pale and lusterless complexion, lips and nails, dizziness, blurred vision, a pale tongue, and a thread-like and feeble pulse. Thank you so much for your attention.